Bitcoin has crashed 19% over the last few weeks, breaking down to $58,000 yesterday. So how much lower can Bitcoin actually drop? And should you be worried? In today's video, we will cover the latest news that has sent the market tumbling down over the last few days. I will break it down and explain the key details that 99% of the people are missing since they're only reading headlines. We'll also take a look at the Bitcoin charts. Remember a couple weeks ago, I warned you guys about the breakdown to $61,500? Well, that pattern is now officially completed and today I'll be sharing a new pattern currently building up with a potential target above $80,000. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. This is what came out yesterday. Mt. Gox to begin repayments in July. Bitcoin slides under 61k. So as we all know, Bitcoin ended up sliding way beyond that. We actually went yesterday as low as $58,000. $58,166. So why did this happen? Well, every single time that we've gotten any type of news from Mt. Gox, Bitcoin has dumped. That's just how it's been every single time. And this is something that's ongoing literally for 10 years now because this happened back in 2014. So let's kind of talk a little bit about what Mt. Gox is and what exactly is it that happened with Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox initially was created by Jed McCaleb in 2010 and it was originally a platform for trading Magic the Gathering cards, which is why the name Mt. Gox, Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. But McCaleb sold the site to Mark Carpellis in 2011, who transformed it into the largest Bitcoin exchange, handling up to 70% of all Bitcoin transactions by 2013. Now in February of 2014, Mt. Gox suspended trading and filed for bankruptcy after announcing the loss of 850,000 Bitcoins, which at the time was worth about $450 million. Now the collapse of Mt. Gox had a significant price impact on the cryptocurrency market, ca causing Bitcoin prices to plummet from over $600 to under $100 within seconds due to panic selling and loss of confidence. The event highlighted major security vulnerabilities within crypto exchanges, leading to increased regulatory scrutiny and demands for better security practices. The aftermath included legal battles, the arrest of uh, the guy who bought it, Mark Carpellis, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and a lengthy process of civil rehabilitation to recover and distribute the remaining assets to creditors, which it's been an ongoing process. It still has not happened. Now, the incident remains a cautionary tale in the crypto world, emphasizing the importance of security regulation and the potential risk involved in cryptocurrency investments. They're predicting that the market impact of the Mt. Gox repayments will be limited due to the structured and phased approach of the repayments. So some uh, experts believe that the psychological impact on the market is going to be more significant than the actual uh impact of the repayments right because the repayments aren't going to be just given out all at once um they're going to be in phases and out of all those repayments all those people that they're paying out not everyone's gonna sell what what actually is dumping the market is the psych just the news the psychological thought of enough people saying oh my god nine billion dollars worth of bitcoin are going into the market and they're going to get dumped right so that's what's ev what everyone's reporting that nine billion dollars are going to get dumped onto the market and that's not true what's going to happen is going to start rolling out in small phases purposely so that nine billion dollars doesn't all get dumped at once so the way that they're paying it out is they've structured it purposely so that it doesn't impact the market that's the main thing that we have to understand but that's not what people are. That's not the way people are playing it right now. There's enough people that are that are that are reading these headlines and thinking nine billion dollars are gonna get dumped into the market. They start selling. Once Bitcoin starts falling hard, that brings the next group of people, which are panic sellers, to begin selling. Once they begin selling, it starts this cascade at that point of traders, and then begin begin to get liquidated. So now we have the people that are reading headlines selling. We have the panic sellers watching price fall selling. Now we have traders getting stopped out of their positions um, selling, right? Which causes that cascade to, to where we get these 7% drops in a, in, in a matter of hours. After that, we have even more panic sellers on top of that. So it's a snowball effect, right? And it all starts from this news 
with enough people believing that $9 billion are gonna get dumped into the market and it begins the snowball effect. The repayment process is set to commence in July, 2024, following a court approved civil rehabilitation plan designed to return lost assets to creditors. The phases approach is designed to provide stability and maintain market confidence by avoiding abrupt changes in liquidity and supply. But the next thing that's been going on in the market that has been kind of headlining Bitcoin dips three and a half percent as German government sells 325 million Bitcoin over two days. Basically, what's going on is that the German government seized nearly 50,000 Bitcoin from the operators of a of a pirated movie website called Movie2K earlier this year. Recent movements in a crypto wallet labeled as German government indicate that the government started moving Bitcoin on June 19th of 2024. The German government moved nearly 6,500 Bitcoin worth about $425 million to various addresses. Some of these transactions involved uh, transferring Bitcoin to exchanges like Kraken and Bitstamp. The government's wallet currently holds still around 43,359 Bitcoin valued at about 2.8 billion dollars now the selling activity by the german government has sparked concerns about potential volatility in the bitcoin market large-scale movements of bitcoin can lead to significant price fluctuations due to increased supply on the market but despite these movements not all transferred bitcoins were liquidated immediately however the mere prospect of such a large stash being sold has contributed to market anxiety that's pretty much what's been going on there. They had over 50,000 Bitcoin worth like two and a half billion. They've already sold around half a billion, but they still have around $2.8 billion basically. So that's the main issue right now. And again, similarly to what's going on with Mount Gox, the market sees this, people that only read headlines, they see, uh, you know, they've sold 400 million in Bitcoin. They still have 2.8 billion. So they're gonna probably sell it and they start trying to front run these things, right? So, and then when you put both of these together, we have Mt. Gox with $9 billion worth of Bitcoin. Plus we have the German government with another $2.8 billion worth of Bitcoin. So we're talking about $11.8 billion that needs to come into the market to be sold, right? At least that's the thought when you just read headlines, but that's not at all exactly how, how it's playing out or what's going on. Even though it might, it's gonna affect the short term, long term, I think this is actually gonna flush out these big sellers so that long term in the next year, we have a more clear pathway for the Bitcoin's value to go up. So even with all this that's been going on, Bitcoin's still holding on above $60,000, which is really impressive. We went as low as 58,000 yesterday. Germany is not the only one that's selling. And this is also another reason of what's been going on in the market. Miners selling Bitcoin. Bitcoin miners in historic sell-off dumping over 30,000 Bitcoin worth $2 billion this month. So this month alone, on top of everything else that's been going on, miners have also sold about $2 billion worth of Bitcoin. So there's been a lot of things just kind of stacking up on top of each other. Bitcoin miners basically have increased their selling activity due to market conditions that and the need to cover operational costs. The transfer of $209 million worth of Bitcoin from miners to exchanges has coincided with recent market dips this indicates that miners' sales are contributing to the current down, downward pressure of Bitcoin prices. Miners selling their Bitcoin holdings in significant volumes can lead to increased supply, further influencing price volatility and market sentiment, right? This is nothing new, guys. Every single time that Bitcoin halving event happens, miners have to begin selling in the beginning because one, they are... They have to sell to upgrade their equipment, right? And that's why a lot of them sell after the Bitcoin halving event happens. So one way that you can actually track this, this here is called the Bitcoin hash ribbon indicator. If we look back on this, I've done multiple videos on this that you guys can check out. All right, so basically, once we get this buy signal, what tends to happen soon after, look at Bitcoin's price. Let's see, the buy signal happened. Let's put it more or less when it happened. It happened here. Let's see what happens soon after that. Bitcoin's price went up 151%. That could just be luck. 
right let's look for another one all right so we got another bitcoin buy signal here before we got the next buy signal let's see what happens here so we went up about 56 percent. so let's look at the, the previous bitcoin halving right 2020 we had the halving so look how similar this is from may through june price was struggling right look at prices during this time we had dump off we had just a big accumulation range here and then we finally got this buy signal so once we got that buy signal what happened look at look at prices so let's look here let's see what prices ended up doing so after that buy signal till the next buy signal we went up about 117 percent when we got that next buy signal which was more or less here so we got a second buy signal and this happened in also at the end of 2020 you can already see where this is heading we got a 246 percent move when that happens so right now we're kind of in this that same spot right now we've gotten all of this all the way since may remember when we looked at 2020 this began in may and eventually we got the buy signal in july so we're kind of looking for the same thing we're gonna look for a buy signal potentially in july let's look back at 2020 after the halving when did we get that buy signal april of 2020 you can see that price went up we got another one in july of 2020 price went up we got another one in november of 2020 we can see how price went up got another one in august of 2020 price went up so we can see on the weekly here this is actually probably the best uh time frame to look at these at these at what we're gonna be looking for is a buy signal here right that could potentially happen maybe sometime in july how far does this go back let me see if i can pull up another another one here where we can potentially see 2016 when the previous halving happened here so this is the previous halving here and look look at this this blue line is a bitcoin halving after the bitcoin halving we got the buy signal in august right so that's 2016. if we go all the way to the very next bitcoin halving here's the bitcoin halving again we got the buy signal in july of 2020. so 2016 we got the buy signal in august in 2020 after the halving we got the buy signal in july and then right now the halving just happened and we're we're looking for the buy signal we're waiting on that once that buy signal happens i believe that's the signal of the fifth and final phase of the bitcoin halving cycle which is the parabolic run as far as the miners selling that's all part of what happens every single cycle eventually we get that buy signal from this indicator so if you guys want a, a way to track it this is how i recommend you guys to track it i've done multiple videos going in depth on how this indicator works so if you guys want to check that out on the page uh make sure to do so so now let's let's jump into a uh technical analysis here on the current price what i'm seeing how things are looking and where we could potentially go from here including a bullish reversal pattern that's on the charts right now on the daily chart right now this is a weekly i always like to kind of start off from the top work our way down so it's very simple what, what we're looking at here guys we've had basically a 19 percent drop so we spoke about all of these things and we spoke about the potential of of hitting sixty one thousand five hundred dollars, which we went way beyond that we ended up going down as low as fifty eight thousand dollars however as as we zoom out further what do we see here we see an a big impulse move up and consolidation this is not new this we literally just saw this recently right if we look here we had this big move up big period of consolidation another impulse move up another big period of consolidation this is something that we've seen kind of over and over again so even if we look back here when we bottomed out we had this big this move up consolidation move up consolidation move up consolidation and it continues right so what we're seeing right now on the weekly this, this could be called a hanging man this could be called a hammer so it just depends how you're looking at it i'm looking at it from a bullish standpoint so i'm looking at it as a hammer candle here basically we're seeing buyers stepping back in in this zone the same way we saw it here so we had a similar candle here i would love to see this candle finish in the green just like this one so for us to go on the green we have to go above let me see this open at sixty-three thousand one fifty-two. 
So we have to get up back above 63,152. That's, that's basically a number to get back into the green before Sunday. So we have plenty of time for that to happen. We can see there's a big support here. We've seen it get bought up every single time. So long wick to the downside. You can see all of these long wicks to the downside. That's always a bullish sign when we're seeing long wicks to the downside. That means that there's not enough sellers. When we have long wicks to the upside, that's usually a sign of weakness to, to that side, right? That's why when we've every time we've reversed, we've had a big long wick, right? Big long wick. Every time, big long wick, big long wick. There's there hasn't been enough uh, buyers to push prices to continue pushing prices up above these levels up here so if we look at the bottom of this we're seeing the same exact thing i think here we could potentially reverse our course here and potentially not quickly you know but slowly kind of work our way back to the top of the range which is up here or right around that seventy thousand dollar area that's where we've been rejected every single time right we've been rejected at seventy thousand every single time all the way back since March. So now let's go into the daily. This is basically the trading range where Bitcoin has been. So we've visited the top of the range multiple times, fallen back down to the bottom of the range, revisited the top of the range, fell back down to the bottom of the range. So now are we going to go back up is, is now the next question, right? Now, one thing that I'm looking at here, this right here is in, inverse head and shoulders a inverse head and shoulders is a bullish reversal sign that price is going to go higher right so so let's try to figure out here where the neckline is and what price target we might get the neckline is is pretty much going to be that seventy thousand dollar range right the way that we figure out the target for bitcoin's price is by measuring from the top of the head so now it could either be from the wick or from the close here. Let, let's start with the wick and then we'll do with the close. So from here to the neckline. So this is more or less about from the head to the neckline. Now we get this and we put it on where a breakout would happen, right? Breakout would be a break above the neckline. So if we broke the neckline. This would be our target. And this gives us a target of about $84,000 for this pattern. Now let's do the same thing with, instead of the neckline, let's do the close of the body to the neckline. And um, let's put this on a break. If this were to break at about 70 grand, that gives us a target of about $82,000. So. Pretty much that that means that we could get anything between 80 to 85 thousand dollars pretty much right with this move and this is the next pattern that i'm looking at now this is on the daily this doesn't mean that it's going to happen right away but this could happen over the next few months so that's something that's something that we're watching here on the daily we're going to continue watching it because this has to form here and then uh once we start getting a move up then we'll have the left shoulder, we'll have the head, and we'll have the right shoulder. Um, that'll pretty much confirm the pattern for us, which could lead to our targets up here between around $83,000 basically on the average of those. That's one, th one thing that I'm going to be watching here as we now go into quarter three and eventually quarter four. I think this is something that we might see in quarter four, right? So. It, it could still be a few months away. Another thing that I wanted to look at here was RSI. So on the RSI, you can see that yesterday we touched the um, oversold area for the first time since way back here in 2023. And one thing that, that we can see is last time that happened after some consolidation here, we did get a move up, ended up being about an 11% move to the upside. We did once again, then drop after that, consolidate for a bit. And eventually we got again, a move to the upside. That, that was a, a pretty big move. I think that was over hundred percent move all the way here, 95%, right? After it being oversold here. And let me see if we continue down uh, back in history, we see back in March, we see another oversold here. 
And what happened after that, we got a massive rally to the upside of about 60%. You can just kind of keep looking back at any time RSI on the daily has been oversold and see what price did. And we can see consolidated for a while and then we got a big move up. Again, even going into the bear market, we got that. And what happened from here to here, even though we're in the bear market, about a 43% move up. Now in the bear market, things are a little bit different because we can expect prices to, to continue down. I wouldn't be looking to play uh, these oversold positions here, but we can see that it does work, especially in a bull market. Um, anytime it, we're oversold, you know, you should be looking to buy at that point, basically. So, and it just happened recently again. We recently, yesterday, hit oversold. So I'm expecting us to bounce, and we've already had a bounce, really. From the bottom here to where we currently are, we're up about 5.6, 5.5%. So we've, we've already began to see that nice, nice little bounce there in the market. I think this could potentially continue up and, and continue giving us a nice bounce. And if we look at the four hour, the same thing. We're massively, massively oversold and we began to to bounce here you can see last time we were oversold right here same thing happened we got a move of about six percent to the upside the time before that when we were over oversold if you look here we got a 15 16 percent move to the upside after that that's something to keep in mind anytime we go into oversold here on the four hour especially on the daily i think the daily is going to be a bigger signal for me a bigger trigger for me those are good signs that price is about to about to bounce basically right the next thing that we're going to talk about is bitcoin's halving cycle we're going to take a look at it uh we've spoken about it a bit already today uh when i when i was speaking about miners selling bitcoin and uh the hash ribbon indicator so let's go ahead and kind of take a deep dive into the Bitcoin halving cycle, where we are currently and compare it to where we've been in previous cycles. So this is currently where we are in the Bitcoin halving cycle. The way to simply describe how the Bitcoin halving cycle works is through phases, right? So we have five different phases in a Bitcoin halving cycle. We have the pre-halving accumulation phase, this usually happens after Bitcoin's price bottoms out and begins to accumulate, basically. Then we have the pre-halving rally. This tends to happen um, before the Bitcoin halving, hence the name, as people begin to get excited and buy the news type of event type of thing. Then we have the pre-halving pullback. So that's basically what happens here, where this is right before the right before the bitcoin halving we typically we typically get a pullback which plays out something like this we saw it again here we've seen it in previous halvings and we'll look at previous halvings in a second then we get phase four which is the post halving accumulation which is pretty much exactly where we've been and look at this guys we've been speaking about this uh for about this for the last like few months really before the the halving everyone was saying um you know the bitcoin halving's coming bitcoin's gonna go to the moon we were saying no the bitcoin halving's coming price is first gonna accumulate for about three months and then you know we can talk about bitcoin going into the to the moon which is phase five and this is the final phase of the bitcoin halving which is the post halving rally so this is a phase where you know bitcoin tends to begin just taking off and having that parabolic run this typically really begins in quarter four so we'll, we'll talk about that as well as why it it usually begins in, in quarter four but right now just get the idea down of how the the bitcoin halving cycles work and why price is doing what it's been doing recently right this is not anything new guys this we've literally had this drawn out for months before the Bitcoin halving even happened and things are playing out exactly how we've drawn them out right now we we drew these out based on historical data right how Bitcoin's price has done historically is how we've kind of we kind of took an average of all those and is how we've drawn this out and it's this is exactly how it's been playing out so far it's literally been playing out almost to the T right just almost too perfectly so um let, let's look at how what happened last time right 
So this is 2020, 2021, our last uh, how Bitcoin halving and our last Bitcoin halving cycle. We can see here, same thing, phase one, price halving, pre-halving accumulation, phase two. Now we did get something different here because we had a COVID crash. This is an outlier event. Um, so we don't take that into account. But after the COVID crash, we had the pre-halving rally, right? So we after that COVID crash, we went right back onto schedule. Then we had a smaller than usual phase three, the pre-halving correction. This was in part because of this outlier event. Then we had a uh, the post-halving accumulation. This was only 70 days. Again, I think this was in part due to the outlier event that we had back here and everything that happened in the macro economy. It was a lot shorter than usual. And you'll see what I mean in a second. And then in July, we really got that move up in September. September is usually not a good month for Bitcoin. But once we went into October, Bitcoin's most bullish month, you can see the rest is basically history. Now, let's go back one more time to one more halving. And let's look at this so that we see that it's not luck. So 2016, 2017 bull run, Bitcoin halving cycles. Same thing. Phase one, accumulation. Phase two, a rally phase three a correction phase four once again accumulation and look at this it went down lower than the halving the pre-halving correction similarly to what what we've done this time around in phase four phase five post halving rally and when did this start this began basically quarter four same time right july was not good august wasn't good accumulated throughout august september just accumulated then once october came around look at what happened the rally really began so october seems to be the time that really lights the fire under that rally keep that date in mind so now you see that this is all by design it is not luck this is a pattern that has happened over and over again. And that's why we're tracking this pattern because it gives us kind of a roadmap of what could happen, right? Where price could be going, how price is gonna be acting. So now that we know the five phases and how Bitcoin has historically done, let's look at why quarter four is probably gonna be the time that we take off. So we already saw Historically, in October is when that phase five really begins, when that Bitcoin rally really starts to take off. Now, the other things that we have to take into account is in quarter four, every single time has been the presidential election. That is always bullish in markets overall, not just crypto, but just markets overall. So that also tends to help Bitcoin in quarter four to really take off. The next thing is um, the supply shock that happens. In quarter four is usually when it tends to begin that supply shock within the market. That helps Bitcoin really start to take off. And then the final thing that we have this year is the rate cuts. Rate cuts are still expected to happen. We're still expecting one to two rate cuts by the end of this year, which is very, very bullish for just overall markets and crypto especially, right? So let's take a look at what we're thinking when the rate cuts might happen and what the probability is real quick. Our next rate decision, we already had it for June. So our next rate decision is in about a month on July. Now remember, every time we've led up to that rate decision, Bitcoin's price has dropped a few days to potentially a week prior to it. The next meeting after that is in September. So there's basically a 65% chance for a rate cut in September. If we do get this rate cut in September, which is usually a bad month for Bitcoin, we will see prices go up. As we continue to go further and further out, the next rate decision meeting is in uh, November. There's a pretty much an 80% chance for a cut. There's a 26% chance that we get two cuts by then. And then in December, there's a 95% chance that we have at least one cut in December, there's a 43% chance that we have two cuts by December. Well, actually there's more because 43 plus 20, right? So it's actually about 65% chance of, of two cuts by December. So that's actually pretty high. 
yeah, the market right now is expecting and, and the probability is shooting for two rate cuts by the end of this year, which is pretty crazy. So if we're thinking that we're gonna get two rate cuts by the end of this year, we have the supply shock happening, we have the presidential election, we have uh, Bitcoin going into phase five, which is the post halving rally, which be usually begins around October. All these things are lining up to be a perfect storm for Bitcoin to really begin rallying in quarter four in October at that towards the end of this year and really hitting potentially, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. I think a hundred thousand dollars is in the, the cards for Bitcoin by the end of this year. So if we're thinking that this is potentially our last shot to accumulate Bitcoin at this current range, right at $60,000 potentially under $60,000 and that goes, and that's also the same thing with altcoins. Altcoins, majority of altcoins are down like 50 to 60% right now, which is insane. ICP, this is a top 25 basically altcoin, is down 98% from its all-time high. Algorand down 96%. We have VeChain down 90%. We have uh, Bitcoin Cash down 89%. Now, I don't think Bitcoin Cash is going to get back to $4,000, but we have Cardano. Cardano is one that I do think could get back to that $3 mark, maybe even beyond. It's down 87%. That's crazy. Just a move back to its previous all-time high is basically a 7x at this point. We have HBAR down 86% as well. A move back to its all-time high, which I do believe it, it can do, is a 6x. Right, we have AAV also down 86%. We have XRP down 85%, 86%. We have Atom down 84%. Guys, there's so many coins here that are down so much that there's so much opportunity. Look at this Avalanche down 82%, Matic down 80%. There's a lot of top coins that are going to eventually get back to their, all, their previous all time highs that are down so much. Chainlink down 73%, near down 72%. Right now, there's a lot of opportunity in the market and these next few months are potentially your last chance to, to really take advantage of these opportunities. I don't, we don't know how much longer before things really begin to rally, right? We're thinking October, but we don't know for sure, right? We don't know where the local bottom is gonna be, which is the best potential area to get in uh, price-wise, right? So we have to begin to DCA to dollar cost average into these positions since we don't know when that bottom is going to be. A year from now, we'll look back to this date, to this drop, to this pullback and think, you know, damn, I wish I would have bought some during that time. Now is the time to dollar cost average and buy the dip at prices that we probably won't see again in crypto. But if you want to make the most profit during this bull run, then you need to know which cryptos have the most potential to run up because not all gains will be equal. So I recently analyzed this and created a tier list of the top 25 cryptos in the order from least profitable to what in my opinion has the most upside to make you the most amount of money during this bull run. So just click on this video on the screen right now and I'll see you guys there.